First of all, I want to thank the uh, DOK community for inviting me uh, here to present to you guys today. And my talk is going to be about how to enable hot restarting of stateful applications uh, running uh, both CPU and GPU uh, uh, pods to accelerate AI ML workloads. And uh, uh, my name is Bernie Wu. I'm with a company called Memverge. Uh, we're based in Silicon Valley. And we are working on different types of memory virtualization and memory snapshotting uh, issues related to uh, AI and ML. Uh, so first of all, what I'd like to do is just describe the, the problem statement. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, enable transparent CPU and GPU snapshotting uh, of, of pods uh, running AI ML workflows. Now, a lot of people ask us, well, don't these AI ML workflows already have built-in checkpoint restore capabilities? They do. Uh, TensorFlow has it, PyTorch has it, et cetera. But uh, nonetheless, we see uh, use cases for being able to do this transparently uh, by the uh, uh, Kubernetes operators uh, uh, to uh, increase productivity, efficiency, and, and sustainability, at the same time lowering costs. So use cases that we've uncovered include uh, being able to run uh, AI ML workloads on Kubernetes, but to also take advantage of spot instances on public clouds. Uh, people also want to be able to hot uh, restart and rebalance GPU workloads across uh, compute resources. Uh, third is to automatically, for example, save and restore uh, uh, users' uh, Jupyter notebooks and machine data sets. Uh, if a, an instance, let's say, out in the public cloud gets reclaimed or, or it's, they go home at night, we can automatically save the state of their Jupyter notebooks and then bring it back up the next day, that kind of thing. Uh, in addition to that, uh, during normal operations of Kubernetes, people will experience uh, uh, evictions, node evictions, uh, or pod evictions. Uh, people need to drain nodes. People want to run auto-scaling. And so we wanted to build an operator that can run with those uh, existing uh, capabilities. And then also the, uh, there are a lot of people trying to introduce batch jobs or, or long-running, uh, not so fault-tolerant applications. And so uh, snapshotting will increase resilience. Uh, so the way we did this is we started off by using Creo. Now Creo is a, uh, an open source project that uh, I think came about around 2012 and uh, is actually also, I believe, in an alpha mode, uh, preview mode on uh, 1.25 for uh, forensic uh, container analysis. Uh, well, we started with Creo and then we, we built on top of that. Uh, there's an, also a, another uh, GPU out there from AMD uh, that, uh, in case you're not aware, already has a plugin that uh, device driver plugin for, for Creo. Uh, and uh, what we've been doing is collaborating with NVIDIA. NVIDIA has a CUDA driver, uh, so we expect sometime uh, a 12.4 CUDA driver just got released, but uh, in the near future, either by 12.5 uh, or before, you'll see a utility being released by NVIDIA. Uh, where at the same time we're doing this presentation, we're also showing this at uh, GTC in, in, in the Bay Area. And there'll be a utility out there that will uh, allow the uh, uh, GPU to be snapshotted, uh, uh, checkpointed. Uh, and, and then, of course, in this business, uh, in this community, we, we built a uh, Kubernetes operator to, to uh, actually implement all this. So, uh, yeah, so let me describe this utility that uh, uh, we've been partnered with, uh, uh, with NVIDIA to develop uh, this utility uh, that uh, allows checkpointing and restoring of the GPU. Uh, so the GPU uh, basically uh, uh, right now is opaque. Uh, so they, they took a little bit of a different approach. Uh, they didn't build a device driver in NVIDIA. They, they have a utility that basically uh, looks for what, what uh, threads are running and uh, when, uh, implements basically its own uh, freeze uh, checkpoint and, 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 and restore process within the GPU uh, architecture. Uh, and uh, so any already submitted work uh, runs to a certain level of completion. And then what happens is the, the, uh, this utility will dump the uh, GPU memory to uh, host memory uh, in an allocated area, and then, uh, and then basically uh, release the GPU. 
so you have two choices. You can either uh, stop it completely or just checkpoint it and then continue uh, running. And then on the restore, there's a reverse process. The GPUs are reacquired by the process and then uh, device memory is copied from the CPU memory back into the GPU memory and mappings are restored and everything, the objects and streams and context are all restored and then the IPIs are unlocked. So that's the general flow. Uh, and to uh, implement this in conjunction with Creo, we had to make some uh, modifications to Creo, uh, which we will be contributing. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, things that we have to do is do the checkpointing in two stages now. So the first stage is that this is the checkpoint cycle. We're freezing the GPU and CPU together, and then we are starting a, we're actually unfreezing one GPU process that will allow us to, to uh, do the checkpointing operation within the GPU and start copying the memory into the CPU, and then copy everything, the CPU's memory, the GPU's memory, and then any uh, kinds of associated uh, ephemeral files or objects and put that all onto a checkpoint image uh, stored uh, typically on somebody's uh, uh, persistent volume uh, out there in the, on, on, the, on the Kubernetes cluster. And then uh, we, we can resume from there. So that's the uh, checkpointing process. The restore is the reverse, is a two-stage process. Uh, again, we have to restore the, uh, the GPU first and then let the Creo uh, utility uh, restore the rest of the uh, CPU state. And so uh, just implementing this on Creo, we t found out is not uh, sufficient because we, we find that uh, the, uh, the window for checkpointing is the overhead. Checkpointing time is, is excessive. So uh, we've done some other enhancements like asynchronous checkpointing to reduce the quiescent period to allow the uh, the uh, uh, CPU and GPU to run as, uh, resume operation as quickly as possible. We've also implemented an incremental checkpointing to minimize the amount of data transfer. And then also compression technology also to, to minimize the consumption of storage or memory uh, as we're doing these checkpoints. And then lastly, we also have to address uh, ephemeral files. Some uh, stateful applications are, st are using uh, the local disk uh, ephemeral files. We have to checkpoint all that. Uh, and then, uh, we have to implement this all as an operator, and then uh, you can uh, imp, uh, you can pick your favorite uh, Stateful app, and then update the uh, manifest so that it, this checkpoint restore is automatically invoked. So what I'd like to do now is show a, a demonstration of this checkpoint uh, restart, hot restart. Uh, we're going to drain a node and then migrate it to another node, and here in this uh, recorded demo, we're using a, a, a T4 NVIDIA T4, and we're using a TensorFlow training workflow. So if I can get this to go, uh, yeah, sorry. This is kind of an eye chart, but down below we're just showing all the nodes. There's a small cluster with two workers. Uh, and then up above there, we're launching the, uh, the operator and the, uh, the TensorFlow uh, job. Up in that corner, you can monitor the, uh, uh, the usage of the, the, the containers being launched. And then we turn on the logging in this upper uh, left panel here so you can see what's going on. Basically, the uh, TensorFlow application is starting to run, it's compiling, and then pretty soon it'll go into a training cycle. You'll see these epics uh, ticking off uh, down at the bottom, bottom upper right there. And then on the lower panel there, what we're doing is we're, uh, uh, we're uh, doing a node drain command. And uh, we're killing the job. It's right now it's at epic seven. And then, on the upper uh, right, you can see the, uh, the, the, uh, the pod being terminated uh, by the scheduler and then, uh, then restarted uh, on, a, on the other worker automatically. And then in a little while, you'll start seeing in the upper left side the, uh, the job resume uh, from where it left off with Epic 7 and, and start going forward. So, uh, so we're saving a lot of time by avoiding allowing hot restart now of these GPU workloads uh, on, on Kubernetes. Uh, so very quickly, there are other recorded demos. You can just click on this square. Uh, we've just got a t TensorFlow and bare metal. We have a Parabricks demo, which is an HPC workload for uh, computational biology that NVIDIA has. Uh, we have our own curated memory machine cloud uh, 
a batch uh, uh, util, uh, uh, app platform that's used for spot instance and, and wave, what we call wave writing uh, on this demo, and then this same Kubernetes operator you just saw. And then last, uh, what's ahead? Uh, we are working with NVIDIA to finish up these modifications to this utility. Uh, there, again, there'll be a preview release uh, sometime between now and the 12.5 release of CUDA, and we'll be contributing the changes to Creo. And then uh, we hope to be collaborating with you folks, but uh, developing production grade operators and applications for this. Thank you very much, and uh, please contact me if you have any questions.